Hi everyone, Caitlin here with Kate's Collectibles. I am bringing you some items from my Sailor Moon collection today. Just little odds and ends. So what I am going to be starting with here are some of the original super deformed figures. So these are very similar to the Petite Chara in that they're sort of like a short squat version of a character. Um, however, they did a line of these in Japan and then later on in North America, uh, they did a re-release like with the new packaging and stuff for the North American audiences. So the couple I'm going to be showing you are North American ones. So they did most of the characters. They did all of the scouts. They did uh, Serenity and Demian. They did Usagi in her schoolgirl uniform. They had the two cats in a package. They even had Molly or Naru in a package. Uh, that was most of them for the first line and then later they did some for the S characters, for Chibi Moon, for uh, all of that. So I don't have very many left. I used to have a lot in my collection but sold them a long time ago when I was trying to you know minimize what I have, similar with the dolls. Um, the Endymion figure is quite nice though. I do think his face is a little funny. He looks a little bit like he's trying to be evil Endymion. I think it's because his eyes are printed so low, like they're next to his nose. If they'd sat a little higher on his face he'd look a little less cat-like maybe. His hair rather than being black is almost like a really chocolatey dark brown a grayish brown and then his outfit they do the same thing with tuxedo mask but his outfit is actually uh, in blue. You can see his big shoulder pads there and then the copyright on the back so 1996 NT assuming Naoko and uh, slash K dot toy uh Irwin China so nice little figure the paint on these is actually really good considering their age as well like the eyes and stuff I was quite gentle with them I was old enough when I got them to play with that while I still played with them uh, it wasn't like I was chewing on them or anybody else in the house would be uh, nobody's scratching up the the eyes or the paint I really liked having this figure especially because there was a serenity one that I had as well I've sort of been hanging on to him, what with the petite charas, because I don't have a... There's no endymion yet. He doesn't really stand on his own, so I usually lean him up against another one. Uh, one of the others that I still have in my collection is Tuxedo Mask. So there he is. Again, outfit is blue, not black. I assume that's so maybe you could see it a little bit better. He's got that crazy unibrow thing going on just under his hat there. You almost never see it, but... It's got that weird line. There it is. Now this figure in particular for some reason is really dusty and it just sticks to the plastic. I was trying to clean him off before. I'll have to take a little more time and do that afterwards. I kind of wish he was holding a rose. Um, I do like the, the way they've got him posed. His face looks really serious. The paint on this one's a little bit more sloppy. Like you can see in here, it goes like into his bangs. Um, around the glove where his his arm meets the cape because it's a solid piece. The paint quite extends into that. But a decent little figure. Let's move those two. Now I do have one that is a bootleg figure uh, that I picked up at a local Sanrio store some years ago. And the reason I picked her up was because at the time, I the internet was not what it is now. So buying something online that was coming from a different place, for the most part, eBay was your only option. And I didn't even think to look for these things on eBay. So I ended up buying uh, the Chibiusa or the Rini figure that they had there. So this one is a knockoff of the Japanese figure, the main figure. And this is a really great example. I know I've talked about bootlegs in a number of my videos. This is a great example of what a bootleg product sometimes looks like. So you can see that the stickers for the eyes, the paint on them is a little bit blurry. It's not crisp and clear. Uh, the paint in general on her outfit is not very well done either. Like you can see around where her bow is, right? Like the white is there that that doesn't fill in um, it doesn't meet very clean at the collar uh, her shoes are kind of a sloppy mess although it's hard to tell what they were trying to accomplish with that I'm assuming those dots are supposed to be the little bows on her shoes but no such luck um, there you go again like paint 
paint that extends onto her leg down there. You know, it's almost like she's wearing shorts. You'll also see that there is no copyright printed on her anywhere. So that is another distinction. And with this one in particular, um, I don't know if the official figure is like this because I do not have one to compare with, but the pigtail on the one side stays on nice and firm. The other one always comes off. And I thought ages ago about super gluing it on and then decided against it because I figured it was a good way to kind of show off basically what the figure was. Now, I don't know if this piece used to be glued. Sorry, I'm off camera there. I don't know if this piece used to be glued and it broke apart at some point. It was like this from the time I got it. You could wiggle it in. And I mean, it'll stay. It's not a problem. But if you pick her up, it just pops right off. So it's something you need to be aware of when playing with her or using the figure. Um, so that is another distinction in this one being a bootleg. The quality is not there. You'll also see the pigtails are a really great way to, to see this. Um, so there is this line printed right there with the, where the pieces come together. Again, I don't have the official one to compare with, but I would suspect that they probably avoid having like a plastic mold line right in the middle of her hair, I would hope. So a few little distinctions that the basic figure and the, the official one, it's the same pose, it's the same basic look, it's the same idea, but it's done much better than this figure. This one was not expensive and I didn't know any better at the time and there were so limited places to get stuff like this that to be perfectly honest, I really didn't care. Um, even our dollar stores had some Sailor Moon figures that were knockoffs essentially of and really cheap knockoffs of some Japanese figures that were more expensive that I didn't even know existed until way down the road past the point that I'd even sold these like you know dollar store ones I mean I knew they weren't official but I had no idea beyond that now the other figure that I still have here that's similar but not quite the same is this uh, dress up change tuxedo mask so they also did a line of these in North America that I believe were uh, supposed to be like the North American version of the Japanese version of these. The only one I ever had, strangely enough, was Tuxedo Mask. And I think part of the reason I got him was because when you compared him to say like, you know, this size for uh, Chibiusa and the Sailor Moon was maybe a little bit you know, small for him, but I liked his height and his look better than the other one. So his hat comes off and reveals his face. There he is. There's a little stand for him so that he actually has a decent base. I'll take that off because it'll make it hard. So this one has a much better face, I think, than, uh, you know, the Endymion or the other one, but he's still a little bit derpy. Like his eyes are really big and really I don't know, wide set. Does that make sense? Um, the smile's a little too smiley. Now there is some damage to the paint with the hair over time here, and that's from the hat. His head is very narrow for the hair, and that's, I assume, to make this hat fit, but you do have to kind of slide it down on his head, and so over time that friction has has caused the problem. Um, I like the way the mask sits with the hat. It, it looks, again, really goofy, but it is a cute way to do this. Now, these little figures, the outfit comes in two parts. So you separate it. And ta-da, there he is in his little undershirt and tidy whities um, He has very soft, pla like compared to the plastic on the head and, and the body, his arms are really quite soft and as you can see, I'm not going to pull too hard, but those joints aren't super strong. He has the little painted on gloves and boots. And then he has a casual outfit, um, you know, going on a date with Usagi. I have no idea what this outfit is supposed to be. If anyone knows what episode this, if this is actually in an episode, um, please comment below and let me know because he looks so ridiculous. He looks like he's working at a carnival or a candy store or like 
he's gonna valet park your car like I have no idea what this outfit is supposed to be these like high-waisted pants with a pleat in the middle um, the, the vest is just mwah, striped shirt and orange and blue stripes no less you know and navy blue pants bright blue stripes just hilarious so I'm not 100% sure why I've hung on to this figure all this time. Again, don't have the packaging for any of these figures um, from, you know, what what they were. But it's just hilarious to me anyway that these figures can, I don't know, can, can hold anything that resembles a serious value. I think these ones probably aren't too bad if you're looking like, you know, eBay, Kijiji, whatever kind of prices. A lot of the Irwin items, I think it's the nostalgia factor that's keeping people paying a lot of money for them. I personally uh, don't see the point. If you are a, a doll collector and like those are the kind you want, by all means, go and, and get those for your collection because they're certainly not ever going to be uh, cheaper, you know, and then maybe than they are now it's hard to say but these are just cute little figures that I've hung on to in my collection over time I probably used to have the majority of these from each line these are the ones I still have they're a cute little bunch of figures in my opinion there's a lot better items to spend your money on if you're looking to find something to collect. I think the petite charas are superior to any of these in terms of their look and style and general feel. However, if you do want items that are small to collect, things that take up less space than you know, big dolls, that sort of thing, then these are a really, a really great choice because they are so tiny. Just keep in mind, like I said, the dust factor with uh, tuxedo mask. They can be a little bit time consuming to tidy up if they're sitting out out of the packaging. So by all means, let me know which which one of these super deformed characters is your favorite in the comments below. Make sure to like the video if you enjoyed this little look at a couple of Sailor Moon knickknacks. And you can always follow me on Twitter at Kate Collectible as well. Thanks.